And we're just bringing up the presentation right now. Mm -hmm. All right, everybody should see a slide. It says prehab for total hip and knee replacement on here. Okay, and uh, we're gonna do this sort of in the context of arthritis, because that's the biggest reason why people end up having a total hip or knee replacement. Oops. So we'll have to go to the first slide here. So first, what is prehab? Might not be a term that um, most of us are familiar with. So rehab is what we typically think of coming to physical therapy for. It's really the work done after surgery or an injury to recover in order to return to whatever activities you want to pursue. Um, so conversely, prehab then would be work done prior to surgery. Uh, and the reasons would be to enhance the outcome after surgery, jumpstart the rehab process. Uh, so when I'm talking about prehab, that's what we're talking about. You can also think of prehab, there are other contexts, like some athletes do prehab to avoid injury during the season, but we're gonna talk about it more in terms of work done prior to joint replacement surgery. Uh, so why do prehab? Um, I did a little bit of a literature review in preparation for this talk, looking at some of the research out there. And it's kind of bullet pointed a list of some of the biggest benefits of prehab. So uh, improved functional performance, that's on the stairs, walking after both total hip and knee replacement with those who did prehab prior to surgery. Um, better range of motion, the ROM stands for range of motion in the uh, second slide. And I should say too that THA stands for total hip replacement and TKA is total knee. So if you see those in the slide, that's what we're referring to. Um, better strength after total knee replacement, shorter hospital stay after total knee replacement. It can be pretty typical to spend a night in the hospital after total knee, not as much after total hip, um, but probably the less time in the hospital, the better. Also an interesting article about telehealth prior to total knee. So um, during this pandemic, a lot of physical therapists, including um, physical therapy at ACAC, started doing telehealth appointments over the computer, where we're in the clinic at our computer and you're at home. And uh, that would actually work pretty well, I could see, for prehab. I'm going to go through some stretches and exercises later, and they're all very simple, the things you can do at home. So definitely prehab can be done via telehealth, and it did result in a shorter stay and better independence at discharge. And I thought this is really interesting, the second bullet point. Uh, in one study, 20% of the participants in a prehab program ended up postponing their total knee replacement because they started to feel so much better. So there's always a chance that could happen, not a bad thing. And then anecdotally, um, from my experience in talking to colleagues, when you someone does prehab, and that can really just be one or two visits, uh, depends on the situation, there, there's a better comfort level with the rehab process you can get all your questions answered about what to expect after your surgery in terms of pain and mobility. Sometimes the appointments with the orth orthopedic surgeon are pretty brief as we know, but in PT we have the luxury of longer time slots so we can get to a lot of questions and education. Uh, and then ideally, if you're gonna do prehab, you'll work with the same therapist during rehab and so you've already got that relationship established, which can definitely help with comfort level and outcomes as well. Yeah. Uh, so at, any good rehab program has goals, and I don't think a prehab program would be any different. So just some, what are some of the goals of a prehab program? Uh, improve or maintain muscle function and strength. Um, maintain or improve range of motion. Improve conditioning and general health. And we're going to come back to this because this to me might be the most important part of it. Um, a lot of times, especially after a total knee replacement, you may need to use a walker or a cane for a time, and if you're not used to that, practicing with it before surgery, before you're on pain meds, um, can be helpful for remembering how to do it afterwards. And then we already talked about the familiarity with physical therapy and rehab. And then the last point, um, advice on modification of current activities. Well, if you're set to undergo a total knee or a total hip, you probably are in a fair amount of pain. But like we said in the third bullet point, very important to stay active and uh, a good physical therapist can help you find ways to, to stay active, you know, maintain your cardiovascular health 
uh, lots of different ways to work out the heart and the rest of your body without irritating whatever joint is bothering you. Okay, so back to that point about staying active. To me, this is probably the most important thing. I think it's pretty easy if your knee or your hip has gotten so painful that you're considering surgery that why should I do anything? I'm going to get this fixed and I can get back in shape. Well, surgery is not a small deal. I mean, it's very common now and most of these have great outcomes, but the better shape you go into surgery, the better shape you'll be coming out of surgery. And particularly if you've got other health issues, diabetes or a heart condition, um, the better condition you can go into surgery, um, there's a less of a likelihood that you'll need to stay like in a skilled nursing facility or inpatient rehab after, after your surgery. That can happen definitely after total knee and hip if you've got a lot of other health issues. So I would encourage you to find ways to stay active and even increase your conditioning going into surgery. Uh, so it's especially important for uh, if you've got other chronic health conditions. And a good physical therapist can definitely work with you to find uh, ways to exercise that are not going to make your knee or your hip um, hurt worse. So I just want to get that out there. That to me is really, really important. Um, so for prehab specifically, the focus is usually, uh, in my mind, on range of motion and then strengthening some key muscle groups. Now there's benefits to strengthening all the muscles in your legs, but I'm just going to focus on the things I think are most important, and they end up being the most important things after surgery as well. Uh, lots of options for these exercises. I'm just going to show some examples. Um, I'm not going to give a lot of specific recommendations on how many sets and reps because everybody is different. Uh, just to show you kind of what it would look like if you were to do a prehab program, I still would encourage you if, if any questions or are not sure, working with a physical therapist can individualize these things for you uh, in a way that's going to strengthen but not irritate your, your joints or your pain more. So let's start with knee range of motion. And I'm gonna have a slide uh, after this that, that'll be a picture. Oh, I'm sorry, it was first. Um, if you look at the picture of this leg, we talk about range of motion of the knee in terms of degrees. So when the leg is fully straight, like the left leg in this picture, we call that full extension or zero degrees. And you really wanna have as close to full extension as you can to make walking efficient and comfortable. It's, the primary goal after knee surgery, but it can also be a goal prior to knee surgery. And then as the knee comes down, um, you get into knee flexion, which is bending your knee. And so 90 degrees would be if you were sitting in a chair and your foot is on the ground, that's about 90 degrees. And then some people have as much as 140 degrees. Um, if you have at least 100 degrees, you'll be able to get up and down out of the chair comfortably. And I have some slides about that later, how much range of motion we're looking for. But just to give you a picture, when I'm talking about knee extension, we're talking about the leg being straight and knee flexion is bending the knee. So knee extension, I always look at the other leg. So uh, hopefully your other leg uh, isn't bothering. We can see what is normal for you in terms of how straight your good leg is and how much you can bend. And we're always looking for as much symmetry as possible. That will make, like I said, walking more efficient. Um, most people that don't have an issue with a joint uh, can be fully straight at zero degrees or even a little past zero. We call that hyperextension, completely normal. And um, it's, it, that can be a goal too, to get close to the other leg. For knee flexion or bending, definitely a correlation between the range of motion you have going into surgery and how easy it is to get it back after surgery. And then I just wrote down some examples of how much range of motion you need for different tasks. So don't need a ton of range of motion in bending or flexion for walking, about 65 degrees. If you want to be able to sit in a chair and stand up uh, without really thinking about it, you need at least 95 degrees, which makes sense if, you, if you're sitting in a chair right now and you have your legs out in front of you as if you're about to get up. That's probably about 95 or 100 degrees. The, lo the lower the chair or a low toilet would be more. And then it, I put 125 degrees as usually the goal. That's that's pretty individualized though. I feel like when people get more than 110 degrees, they can do most things in day-to-day -day life and not really notice it, but um, trying to get close to the other side at least. Okay, so uh, a couple of simple things to work on knee extension. This is Maddie. She's a uh, physical, physical therapy extender in our downtown clinic and I had her um, 
demonstrate some of these exercises. So called this a heel prop for knee extension. Um, it's a great stretch because gravity is doing all the work. You don't really have to do anything. Uh, the key points here is she's got the back of her leg on this little half foam roller with a towel. You can use a, a pillow, a firm pillow, a bolster, um, maybe even some books with some towels over it. Um, the most important thing is that if you look under Maddie's calf, just below her knee, there's space between her calf and the table. And that's important because that will allow the knee to straighten as you're in this position. If you set up in this position, but the back of your calf is already touching the bed or the floor, you're really not gonna get anything out of this stretch. You need to have a little bit of space there. And this can be a little bit uncomfortable. I always have people start with just a few minutes, but you can do it a few different times throughout the day. Probably no reason to hold this for more than five or 10 minutes at a time but it's stretching all the soft tissue um, in the back of your knee, which can limit how straight you can get your knee. And it's something that if you're tight in this direction after surgery, you're gonna do a lot of as well too. Um, I know this is the same idea, just a different position. Uh, so you could be seated in a chair or in a sofa and then have your leg out in front of you on a coffee table or an ottoman or another chair. But you can see the idea is the same. There's nothing to stop her leg from becoming straighter while she's in this position. And it can be good if you're trying to do this at work or while you're watching TV. Um, so, you, and you can mix and match this position and a prior position. One's not necessarily better than the other. Whichever one you feel more relaxed in and you can um, hold for a little bit longer is probably the better one to use. Um, so those two, uh, heel props stretch the tissue in the back of the knee. There are some muscles that cross the back of the knee joint. So if they get tight, they're going to limit how much you can straighten your knees. So the calf muscle um, behind your shin and your lower leg actually crosses the back of the knee joint. So if it's really tight, it can uh, limit how straight you can get your knee. So a lot of people, if, that, if I think that's an issue, do a simple calf stretch. And Maddie here is stretching her right leg, the leg that's back. And a couple key points with the setup, you really want to make sure that your um, the leg you're stretching the foot is pointed straight ahead. A lot of people set up with that foot ducked out to the side, and you're not going to get the same kind of stretch. So always look down, make sure it's pointed straight ahead. Make sure the heel is on the ground. If your heel is not on the ground, you're probably too far away from the wall, and you should move your foot a little closer to the wall. And then you want to get that knee as straight as you can. And I'll have people hold this between 30 seconds and a minute, but trying to get a couple minutes really total. So you can do 30 seconds, do the other side, come back, do 30 seconds. But with stretching muscles, a lot of the literature um, is going to two, at least two minutes to really make uh, change in the length of that tissue. And I'm gonna probably point out a lot of details in these exercises because they're pretty common exercises, but if you don't pay attention to the details, you're not gonna get the same benefit out of them. So hamstrings, the muscles on the back of your thigh, they also cross the back of the knee joint. So if they get tight, that's gonna limit your ability to straighten your knee. I like stretches that are comfortable and easy to hold. A lot of different ways to stretch your hamstrings, um, but to me, this is one of the better ways. The one thing about Maddie, her setup, she's got her heel dug into the ground and her toes pulled towards her a little bit. And then she sat up as straight as possible. Now. If I get in that position and sit up as straight as possible, I immediately feel a pretty strong stretch and I'm done because I'm not that flexible. If you get in that position and don't feel anything, then you can lean forward from the waist a little bit. Um, but I just don't want you slouching or slumping through your back. You really want to keep the, the back upright. And again, you can hold this for 30 seconds to a minute, trying to get two minutes total. And I like this one because you can be watching TV or talking to someone or at your desk at work. Um, and it's not, it doesn't take a lot of effort to hold it. Because the more you can relax with a stretch, the better that stretch is gonna be. Okay, so in terms of knee flexion or how much you can bend your knee, uh, the quadriceps muscle, which is a big muscle in front of your thigh, the tendon of that muscle actually goes across your kneecap and, and connects to your shin. So if your quadriceps is tight, since it crosses the front of the knee, it's going to limit how much you can bend your knee. So this little video, see this plays. <clears throat> so 
So Maddie's got one of these stretch straps. I've had patients use a dog leash or a rope and she looped that around her, the bottom of her leg. You could also loop it around your foot. And then it's pretty simple. You're gonna lie on your stomach and if your back's at all tricky, I'd probably encourage you to lie flat. Maddie's um, propped up on her elbows, but if that's not comfortable, just lie flat. And you can get a lot of leverage um, pulling that strap over your shoulder. And it doesn't take a lot of work to get a nice stretch in the front of the thigh. And so these stretch straps, we sell them. They're on Amazon. They're not that much, but you could use anything that would um, be long enough to get, put you in this position. So I'll show you that setup one more time. The straps are nice because you can loop them through each other like that and get a nice secure hold. So here's a little more active way to um, work on knee flexion. And that's a little furniture slider that Maddie's got under her foot. You could do it with a pillowcase on a hardwood floor. You could probably do it with your socks if it's slippery enough. Oh, actually first, yeah, this is the first position you can do it in. Uh, you can do this in bed with slippery sheets on a floor with a towel. And she's just pulling the knee towards, or pulling the heel towards her butt until she feels some resistance in her knee. Pause for a second and then straighten it back out. So same principle when you're, when you're sitting down. You just want to pull it back to feel a little resistance, pause for a second, and you can do this like 15 or 20 times, but it's an active way to kind of work on all the tissues that are tight in the front of your knee. And there's a good view from the side. You can also even use, if you're really um, tight, use your left leg to kind of push your right leg back a little bit under you. And let's just look at the um, line down one more time. This is a really good way to do it as well. A lot of people, if you have socks on and you're in bed, usually the sheets are slippery enough to be able to do this. Uh, another way to work on <coughs> knee flexion in standing is to set up on a stool, uh, could be a stair at home, a low chair, and just lunge forward till you feel a little resistance, hold it for a second or two, come back out. You don't need to get all the range of motion at once. Like I said, repeat this 15 or 20 times. I'm just trying to get a little bit more by the end. I like it because you can use your body weight as leverage. Um, so it doesn't require a ton of effort to work on the bending. And these are all things that end up, you end up doing after surgery a lot as well. Okay, so let's talk about the range of motion at the hip joint. Um, Let's say here, there's a, a saying, no pain, no gain. I don't, that's not always true. I definitely don't think that's true in terms of range of motion at the hip. <clears throat> if you're doing any stretching for your hip and you're getting really sharp or pinching sensations, I, I would, to me, that's a red light. I would stop doing that stretch or definitely not do it as aggressively. And a lot of times that can happen with hip flexion. And I have a slide that will show that, but that's when you're bringing your knee towards your chest or you're bending over an internal rotation of the hip. And so if you're getting those sharp, pinching feelings, I would lay off that stretch. Now hip extension, and I'll show you a picture of it in a second, is something that is good to work on, usually doesn't cause any problems and can help walking efficiency and comfort um, before and after surgery. So it's a picture of movements at the hip. So the first one on the top um, left of the screen is hip flexion when the knee's coming up towards the trunk. That's the one that can definitely get limited in arthritis. And just trying to stretch in that direction isn't usually a great idea. Um, but just below it is hip extension where this model's left leg, the thigh is moving back behind the hip. You need a fair amount of hip extension to walk efficiently. And when we lose it, sometimes we tend to move through our low back a little bit, like arch our low back to get that hip extension. So sometimes working on hip extension can also help your back feel better. And then we won't talk as much about these other motions. Um, Bottom right is medial rotation, that's internal rotation. It's not a great picture, but it's when your thigh is rotating in towards the midline of your body, that can get a little bit uh, pinchy with arthritis too, and it's not something to push through. Sorry for this being a little blurry, but this is the gait cycle, and let's look at the shaded leg. It's the model's right leg, and you can see the very first slide, she's in a little bit of hip flexion, like the thigh is coming in front of her, but not very much. You don't need a ton of hip flexion to walk normally. But as she goes through the, the uh, gait cycle, when you get to the, the image in the middle, the fourth image, her thigh is at least 10 degrees behind her body, if I'm just gonna eyeball this. 
And so it's definitely important to be able to have that range of motion to walk efficiently normally. And it can get tight, um, not just with arthritis, but uh, just as we get older. So this is a great way to work on <clears throat> hip flexion. It's also a good stretch for the quadriceps. It can be used for knee flexion. Maddie's got that same um, stretch strap looped around her leg like we used for the other stretch on her stomach. You can use belts, dog leash. I've, I've seen everyone try different things. Um, let's get this video started. So it's pretty easy. You're just gonna lie there and get some leverage with the strap over your shoulder. Now, I would say if you're really tight, you don't even need the strap. I have plenty of patients where we'll just get in this position, let the left leg hang off the table, and already there's a great, a great stretch in the front of the thigh. So you'd be, you should be feeling the stretch in the front of your thigh, a little bit in front of your hip. And like I said, Maddie's very flexible. You might not even need the strap. Uh, I like this. It's easy to hold for a couple of minutes, pretty relaxing. If your back bothers you in this position, uh, just make sure that your right leg or whatever leg you're not stretching is bent, like she has her knee bent. That's going to put the low back in a little bit better position. If you were to do this line with that leg straight out, it might be a little uncomfortable on your back. Uh, but this is a really good one for hip extension and even knee flexion. Oops. So here's one, trunk rotations. This is working on a little bit of that internal and external rotation of the hip. Also feels really good on the back. Um, not one to push through any kind of pain. So watch Maddie do this first. And she's pretty flexible again. Don't feel like you need to get all that far over. Um, but you just want to rock side to side as far as you feel like your body wants to let you go. And I, I think for her, I probably would need to cue her to leave her low back on the table a little bit more rather than come all the way over, but you're gonna rock back and forth and just stop when you feel some resistance. Yeah, that's better, Maddie. And, <laughs> and you can do this kind of, you know, 15 or 20 times, nice and rhythmically. Uh, and like I said, if it's feeling really bad going to one side, just stop a little shy of where you feel the pain and go a little bit more to the other side. But maybe over the course of doing it 15 or 20 times, it feels a little bit better. Yeah, that's probably a little bit more realistic range of motion. Let's talk a little bit about strengthening. Um, benefit to strengthening all the muscles in the legs, but let's focus on the most important ones. So quadriceps, when you look at the front of your thigh, that's mostly what you're seeing. It's actually made up of four different muscles um, in this picture on the left, but it's the main dynamic stabilizer of your knee. Definitely tends to get weak when you have a lot of knee pain or arthritis and after surgery. So we're gonna focus a lot on that. And then the gluteal muscles are basically your butt and the side of your hip. Um, there's three or four muscles <clears throat> that are all important and depending on your hip surgery, sometimes those muscles actually get cut through a little bit. So important to pay attention to strengthening those. Uh, let's talk about the quadriceps first as it relates to total knee replacement. Um, as I said, it's the main stabilizer of the knee. It's important in climbing stairs, getting up from a chair, walking, balance, it's all very functional things. Um, read a study where um, strength deficits um, that were associated with arthritis before surgery, uh, those strength deficits could linger for more than a year after surgery. So definitely important to try to get this muscle as strong as you can both before and after surgery. Really simple one that um, I'll get people to do uh, right away after surgery and even before, it's called a quad set. And you can lie on your back, you don't need to be propped up like Maddie is. Um, I like to have a towel under the knee. Let's play this first and I'll, I'll talk us through it. So there's Maddie rolling up the towel. It gives your knee a little bit of something to push into. Now Maddie doesn't have arthritis in her knee or any knee pain. So when she squeezes her quadriceps on the front of her thigh as tight as she can, she can actually pop her heel up off the table a little bit. Even if you can't do that, you want to kind of think that that's the goal. Like when you squeeze the muscle in the front of your thigh, you're trying to pop that heel up trying to keep the back of your knee on that towel roll. And all people hold this for like 10 seconds because it looks really easy, but let's spend those 10 seconds getting that mind muscle connection to the quadricep and repeating this like 10 times and then it can actually get a little bit fatiguing. And I always have people try it on their other leg first so they kind of see what normal is and feels like. I like to do that with a lot of exercises. Oops. 
some time I'll learn how to advance without the video playing again. <laughs> okay, so then we're going to take that that uh, quad set and turn it into a straight leg raise. And we talked about the quadricep being the main dynamic stabilizer of the knee joint. So in this exercise, we're asking the quadricep to work to keep the knee stable and straight the whole time. Now I have people come in and show me this and they'll lift their leg way over their head almost to their face and think I'll be impressed. That's not the point of this exercise. It's to be very slow and controlled. Let's watch Maddie do this. So she pulls her toes towards her, does a little bit of a quad set to start the movement. And then the idea is to keep that knee locked out as straight as possible the whole way up. And I'll tell people just to stop at the height of the other knee, maybe even not as high as Maddie's going, and to pause for a second and come down nice and slow. Keeping that toe pulled towards you, <clears throat> squeezing as hard as you can that quadricep muscle the whole time. And then you can reset when you get to the bottom to do another rep. But the slower you do it, the more effort you put into squeezing that quadricep, the more you're going to get out of this exercise. And people can do this well, can do like 10 repetitions with keeping the leg perfectly straight. They tend to be able to walk very well. And if they can't do this very well, where the knee's bent a little bit or they get tired, you can see it in the way that they walk. Hmm. Yeah. All right. All right, so let's talk a little bit about um, glute strength and total hip. So the glute muscle is really important in keeping your hips level, especially when you're standing on one leg. Um, going up and down the stairs is really important. So therefore, really important for balance. They also play a big role in walking, getting up and down from a chair. Uh, just like with the quadriceps and the knee, um, having persistent pain or arthritis in the hip can kind of inhibit those muscles. They can weaken a little bit. And then, if you're said to undergo total hip, you might be aware there's kind of two main approaches. There's an anterior approach in the front of the hip. It's not as common, uh, but it doesn't really impact the gluteal muscles as much. More common technique is posterior lateral, kind of on the back or outside of the hip, and that can, uh, they might they have to go through um, some of the gluteal muscles. And so uh, another reason to really try to strengthen them both before and after. So glute bridge is a pretty basic one. Let's watch Maddie do it and I'll talk through it a little bit. And it uh, can be done on the floor or on a bed. You're gonna think about pushing down through your heels into the table and squeezing uh, your glutes or your butt basically as hard as you can. Come up, like to hold it for three to five seconds and come down nice and slow. It's not about how fast you can do it. It's not about how high you can get your hips. If you can get to a straight line like Maddie is, that's fine. I'd rather you just keep tension on the muscle the whole time. Sometimes when people do this, uh, they'll get some cramping in the back of the hamstrings. That just means your hamstrings are trying to take over a little bit. So what I'll have people do, you can play around with how close or far your feet are from your um, hips. And I'll also have people pull their toes up off the table. So you really have to press through your heels. And when you press through your heels, kind of preferentially activates those glute muscles a little bit more. And if you're really tight in the front of your hip, like we talked about hip extension before, um, you might feel a stretch at the top of this, this movement too. All right, and then here's another one, sideline clams. Let's look at this first. Now Maddie's doing an excellent job of keeping her hips and her trunk really stable. The only thing that's moving is her top leg and it's only moving from the hip joint. Uh, your body's going to try to find the easiest way to do whatever you want it to do. So I'll see a lot of times people, as they bring the top leg up, will roll backwards a little bit. You really don't want to do that. You want to stay nice and still. And if you can't come up very high with that top leg, that's fine. Much better to isolate that motion to the glute muscles. And where her, Maddie's hand is, that's really where she feels the work happening in this exercise. Now, if this one feels pinchy or doesn't feel good, don't do it but definitely be very strict with your form. And this is one you can do a lot of repetitions for, looking for some fatigue in that muscle. And uh, probably worth doing on both sides as well. Okay, let's go on to some standing exercises. We talked about hip extension before, so you can actually work on hip extension in standing. And I would always recommend starting by holding on to something, just to make sure you're okay with it. Not, it's not meant to be a balance exercise, and we really want to key in and strengthen those hip muscles. So if you're not sure about your balance, definitely hold on. It's, it's perfectly fine to do that. 
So actually first Matty's doing hip abduction. So abduction is bringing your leg out to the side. That's working your gluteal muscles in a different area. Um, she's going a little bit diagonally back, which is great. I feel like when I tell people to go to the side, they end up going forward a little bit with their leg, which is not targeting the muscle we want to target. Um, so going a little bit out to the side is fine. And now she's working into hip extension. So she's just going straight back. And if you look at Maddie's back and her trunk and her core, it's barely moving. All the movement is from the hip joint. That's what we want. There's no reason to kind of lean forward just so you can get your leg back farther or arch your back or lean to the side so if you can get your leg farther out to the side. If you can't go very far, don't worry about it. But make the motion just come from the hip joint and keep the tension on those glutes the whole time. Uh, mini squats, really functional. It's gonna work glutes, quadriceps. Um, let's watch Maddie do it and we'll talk about it. Yeah, always start, I'd say, holding on to a counter or the back of the chair if you're not sure how it's gonna feel, uh, if you're worried about your balance. So she's really sticking her hips back as she sits down, really loading up those glute muscles. Pausing for a second at the bottom, a nice slow tempo where you're not relying on momentum, you are making the muscles in control of the motion. Now she's comfortable doing that, so she's gonna let go. And you can see she's, her shoulders are coming forward and, her, and she's sitting her hips back. That's the right way to do this. A lot of people squat, they think they need to squat very up and down. Like I see people keep their trunks um, very rigid. It's okay to lean forward a little bit because you want to stick those hips back to work on the glute muscles. And I also say, um, I tell people to have their feet about hip or shoulder width apart and definitely okay to turn your toes out a little bit. And Maddie's able to do it with her toes pointed straight ahead, but if it's more comfortable to turn your toes out a little bit, that's totally fine. And then obviously you can make this harder by holding something, um, a, a weight, a book, whatever. And actually, let me go back to the one before. Oops. Um, you can also increase the challenge on this one by like ankle weights or TheraBand around the feet, but it's something too that physical therapists could help show you ways to progress to make them harder. Okay, and then step ups, again, a nice functional movement to work on um, more than one muscle at a time, quadriceps and glutes. You can do this at home, stairs or a stool, I'd recommend holding on first. And what I like to do, I like people to finish the movement. So Maddie's working out her left leg. So she's coming all the way up at the top, her knee's straight, her hips are straight. Sometimes people don't quite get all the way straight at the hip and the knee. I also like to keep the leg that's working on the stool or step the whole time rather than bring it back off. Uh, kind of reduces some of the strain on the hip flexor, but helps keep the work going on the quadricep and the glutes. And you can hold something like a weight to make it harder. You can work on a little bit of a higher step. Also really important to control the descent, not just let gravity plop you down, but you want to be in control of the motion on the way up and the way down. Like half the benefit of all these exercises is the way down. So don't let gravity just push you around. And then we uh, have mostly talked about, I'll pause this for a second, mostly talked about the quadriceps and the glutes, but I said there's benefit to strengthening all the muscles in the legs. And I did want to just throw in for the calves. The, ca the cal we, calves get weaker as we age, actually quicker than some of the other muscles in our legs. It's pretty interesting. I don't think researchers know why yet, but I've seen some studies that have pointed that out. They're really important in balance and walking. Um, they're part of the whole chain of muscles in your leg. Um, so heel raises, pretty simple. As always, the details are pretty important. You want to go, you want to move up and down not like forward backwards, so moving against gravity. Make sure your feet are pointed straight ahead, not ducked out to the side. And then you really wanna make sure the weight is really through your first and second toes primarily, not to the outside of your foot. That's really gonna target the part of your calf that's most important. And pausing at the top, Maddie's doing a good job coming to a complete stop for a second or two, and then slowly back down. If you do this correctly, it can get really tiring. And you can make it harder by Obviously doing one leg at a time, there's some ways to sort of um, work on one leg at a time without actually standing on one leg, but it's a little tricky to show in this video. So I think that covers most of the, the exercises and stretches I wanted to go through. So here's my contact information. 
definitely feel free to email me. Um, I always check my email and I'll answer you if you have a question you don't want to ask today or something that comes up later. And then we're gonna look in the chat room. Okay. And the safe distance where I can take off my mask. No, I couldn't. I'm sorry. I was trying to speak as clearly as I could. Will there be some place we can print these exercises? Don't think we'd plan on that. Um, uh, I'll think about that. Maybe we can post a sheet or a link to a sheet with some of these on it. Um, that could be something I can work on for sure. And I said it's always best to get these individualized with a physical therapist, but I, I think I could, I'd be okay printing a picture of some of these. Heel slides for range of motion or strengthening. Range of motion, mostly. Working on the ability to bend the knee or knee flexion. Um, if your hamstring's really weak, you could get a little hamstring strengthening out of it, but it's really trying to gradually get that knee to bend more. So I'll see if any other questions pop up. But if not, I really appreciate everybody tuning in. And I said, feel free to, um, to email me with any questions you think of later. And I think this is going to get, this video will get posted as well on our YouTube channel. When would that be, you think? Um, I'll probably, I'll have it up tomorrow. Okay. So if you want to share this with anybody, we, Physical Therapy at ACAC has a YouTube channel, which I probably should have put a link. But um, this, uh, this video will be on the long, along with the other talks that we've been doing this past year. Yeah, we'll post it so you can access that. And of course, it'll have the exercises, um, but we can certainly see about working on getting a printout for you guys and, and link it to, to the YouTube. Um, you can find it there. Um, you should have received probably in the um, email a link to our YouTube page. So if you still have that email, you can find it there. Okay, another question just popped up is prehab something that one's doctor prescribes? Yeah, the same way you normally access physical therapy, your surgeon can write you a, a referral to physical therapy for knee or hip strengthening, range of motion, prehab, whatever he wants to write on there, totally fine. Um, Virginia also has direct access where you can come see a physical therapist without a prescription for up to 30 days. And I think prehab, a lot of times, you said it could just be a couple of visits. It really depends on how much you wanna do at home on your own. So you can come direct access for up to 30 days without a referral, or you can definitely get a referral from your surgeon or physician. That's a good, good question. Hey, Austin, this is John Bush. Can you hear me? I can. Um, how far out before your planned surgery should you uh, set up your prehab? That's a good question, too. Um, I'd say a couple months just to be able to get in the swing of a routine and give your muscles enough time. I feel like... Physical therapy in general, I tell people to give it six to eight weeks if they come in here for pain or an injury. So I, I think giving it six to eight weeks to work on your range of motion and your strength would be giving it a pretty fair shot um, prior to surgery. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Not seeing any other questions. So I thank everyone for coming out today. Hope this was helpful. Feel free to reach out if anything else comes up and um, look out for more talks from us in the future. Great job, Austin. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day, everyone. You too. All right, perfect. Thanks.